I just wanted to do a quick follow-up on my motorized potentiometer design because basically immediately after I finished this video I remembered that dual gang potentiometers exist. This already has two potentiometers connected to a single shaft so I don't have to use two separate potentiometers connected by gears. So I'd encourage you to watch the first video if you want to know the actual design of this thing. Uh, but a quick recap is that uh, I would use one potentiometer to just be a control signal so that I can tell where this thing is set. The other potentiometer is the one you would connect to your circuit to you know, actually use as a potentiometer. And the whole thing's connected to a motor which spins it to the correct position you know, based on the control pot. So when I remembered these existed, I decided to go online and buy a couple and see what I could do. You know, what I couldn't really see online was what is the bottom of this thing going to look like? Am I going to be able to take this apart the way that I took apart the other potentiometer so that I could add a shaft to it? And uh, yeah, so what it turns out is that it's a hexagon shape already under there and there's no metal base covering it like there was, uh, you know, on a single potentiometer like this. So I thought that seems like it could be usable. What if I could find something that fits right into that hole? And, uh, well, it turns out that a four millimeter Allen wrench is the exact fit for this thing. Not that that's super useful because what am I gonna do with an Allen wrench? But at least I knew what the size needed to be. So I searched around and I couldn't find anything that would be uh, useful for this. So I figured it was finally time to go ahead and figure out 3D printing. So I ended up using FreeCAD, uh, which is, as the name implies, a free CAD software to design a hexagon that would fit in this little hole, knowing that it needs to be a four millimeter uh, diameter, diagonal, whatever you call that measurement. And then I carved out a two millimeter hole, uh, which would fit the shaft in it. So then I just needed to print it. But the thing is, I still don't own my own 3D printer, so, uh, at this point in the video, I'm going to go ahead and say thanks to PCB Way. They are a service that will fabricate PCBs, as well as do 3D printing and a few other services. And they actually are sponsoring my video after this one. So I'll talk a little bit more about them later. But uh, they provided me with uh, these 3D printed parts. So yeah, this is what I ended up with. They are, as you might expect, just little plastic hexagons uh, with a hole on one side, and the corners are very slightly rounded uh, around the edges. So I have these printed using resin, which for one thing is the cheaper uh, material to use, at least with this service, but also from what I read, it tends to give you a more accurate print than the filament type printing. I, I don't really know anything about 3D printing still, okay? But uh, yeah, so that's what I got. And yeah, as it turns out, it is basically a perfect fit in the bottom of these dual gang potentiometers. Uh, I don't even need to glue that. That is a very tight fit. And then of course this can fit the two millimeter shaft in it, which takes a little bit of pressure. And yeah, so that turns what was previously like a 30 minute to an hour long process into a few seconds. So this is a huge improvement on the design of these things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble this uh, inside the box with the old design. Knock the camera over. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm just gonna assemble this in the box with the old design and we can get a look at how they compare when they're finished. Talk about uh, some of the other pros. There's really no cons to doing it this way. So talk about some of the other pros. Yeah, remember this design? Beautiful work of art. Uh, so anyway, if I'm gonna just be using these dual gang potentiometers, they're already tied to one shaft, so I can actually totally eliminate well, that. Doesn't erase well. As I was saying, I can totally eliminate one of these things. And now my design just needs a motor and a potentiometer. And I'm still gonna use a gear to connect those two, but I'm gonna make some modifications here as well. So I'm gonna include the CAD files for the little 3D printed pieces. And if you wanna copy this project, uh, it's worth noting that these are uh, Borns brand potentiometers. I can't guarantee that any other brand of dual gang potentiometer is gonna have this same hexagon on the bottom that you can fit those little pieces into. Um, and another thing to note is that 
potentiometers I used before were not Born's brand. I don't really remember what these were, but they were just some uh, cheap pack of potentiometers that I got from Amazon. And I don't, I can't really show this on the video that well, but just the the force it takes to turn these single ones I got is significantly greater than the Borns ones. The Borns ones, they just turn so smoothly and easily. Uh, so that's gonna impact how well the motor is able to turn these things. Uh, it should be able to turn them much easier, which means I can change the gear ratio uh, and maybe uh, make some other improvements based on that. And another benefit here is not only did I save time on disassembling and reassembling a single gang pot twice, but the risk of damaging your potentiometers to build this is vastly lowered because you don't have to take anything apart. You're just sticking this little hexagon thing in here. All right, so I've wired up the new design. As you can see over here is the old design with two separate potentiometers and the motor. And over here's the new one with just the one dual potentiometer connected to the motor. So it definitely takes up a lot less space in the case. And another thing is I changed the gear that's on the motor shaft to be, I think it's like a 32 or something like that, tooth motor, rather than the 10, because I don't know, maybe it's got to do with like the imperfect positioning of everything, the way that I've uh, done this, but it's like I can feel the teeth as I turn the knob. So it's almost like, I don't know, it's almost like it's a notched potentiometer that that only goes to certain positions. And I don't know, you probably can't see this in the video, but it's just it's just a bit smoother to turn compared to this one. Oh, and by the way, earlier I said there were no cons to the new design, but I guess there is one. Uh, the dual gang potentiometers are a little bit harder to find um, in, in all values that you might want than the single gang, but they're still far more widely available than the uh, already built motorized potentiometers you can buy. So. Everything is wired up exactly as it was last time. Um, and it all works the same way, but I will still go ahead and give a quick demo. So just like last time, all I do is send the letter A and it goes into position. Do that once more. And also like last time, I can set the knob wherever I want it to be. Send an S to save that position. Move it freely. And send another A. And there you go. Uh, I'm using the same sketch, basically. I just changed a few parameters since uh, the resistance on this knob is slightly different than the resistance on this knob. Uh, but outside of that, uh, yeah, all well, that's the same. It was far simpler to build and yeah I just wanted to give a quick update on that and once again, thanks to PCB way for sending out the uh, 3d printed stuff and I'll do a more in-depth review about that service in the next video. So see you later